Hi, I'm Claude Oliver, president of Tri-Cities Realty Group. On our Community Matters program, there is going to be a series of programs, Youth Empowered Solutions. Uh, it came about as a result of me getting a haircut one day, looking for help uh, as a result of a request uh, for help from one of the persons working there and uh, trying to find a connective uh, community for her son and not getting that. And then we looked out and found that there were even greater issues in the community uh, for the youth, for the parents, uh, the whole gamut of, of concerns. A group of us got together uh, in terms of trying to get our arms around the issue uh, and uh, on the, the mall Starbucks. And uh, one of those people that uh, uh, was invited to that group huddle, group hug, was a guy I've known for a number of years, Randy Rutledge, uh, who is with the Benton City Economic Development uh, Commission. And uh, he wears many, many hats in the city of Benton. I got to share with you just a real quick snapshot uh, the intern that we picked up for the project, uh, Kate Wright, uh, we were looking at all of these corners of the community, finding more needs and more needs. We found a lot of wonderful people, uh, but the connectivity between their agency and another agency, uh, specific to the a person's at-risk need. And uh, Randy, I'm going to ask uh, to give us a breakout on what's at risk. You know, we all hear that, but what it really is that there's a lot of elements in there. And Randy and, and our group at the Starbucks talked about an approach to, um, you know, finding connectivity and collaborating, uh, making something better in the community. Uh, Kate Wright, the intern that uh, was given to us uh, through Heritage College, uh, said, Clyde, we're looking at a lot of territory, a lot of needs in Benton Franklin and Burbank. And uh, you know what, we've got to you know, focus this back to a, a project that we can specifically take on and do. I said, Kate, you're right. I don't know what I'm going to do. Prayed on it overnight. Next morning, it was like, why don't we go to Benton City? Because they have some of everything. They're a great microcosm in terms of the whole community uh, that we're concerned about. And so we then uh, chose to focus our project, Youth Empowered Solutions, on Benton City. And we even went through a process to come up with the idea, how would we come up with youth-empowered solutions? Well, everybody thinks kids are the problem. No, kids are specifically part of the solution. Um, when they're in households that the parents have abandoned them, are on methamphetamine, drug craze, uh, sex binges that go on for weeks, and they don't even know if their kids are getting a meal or if they've even got kids, it's a disenfranchised world for those individuals. They're disempowered. They do not know what to do. Well, one of the guys uh, at that uh, Starbucks that's always been in this cause is Randy Rutledge. Randy and I go back to Seattle First National Bank, for those of you that can remember <laughs> those days. Uh, and uh, we commensurated talk to community projects. Mm -hmm. And Randy was a real charger and did some wonderful things including Bradley Landing at Richland, uh, yeah. which is a great statement. Always coached uh, football, uh, involved in kids, and always there for, you know, whether it was coaching whatever, basketball, uh, baseball, just a wonderful friend over the years. And so Randy was one of the people that I said, hey, I've heard you talk about your concerns on this. Can we get together at Starbucks and see what we can do? And at that point, we hadn't focused our project to Benton City, but I think after you hear from Randy, you'll get an idea why he has such a good handle on the issues we're facing and what he has been doing in Benton City and why our YES team decided uh, Benton City is what we're going to do to set up a pilot uh, project. So, Mr. Rutledge, with that buildup, where can you go from there? Ah, that's a good question, Claude. Uh, I got out to uh, Benton City uh, about 10 years ago, a little over. Um, I'd lived in the uh, in Kennewick and in wrestling for at least 20, 30 years, and had been actively involved coaching kids and teaching kids karate. A, young, a gentleman by my John Stewart got me doing that. And when you do coach kids and you relate to them, you start talking to them and hearing what they say back to you. And so I got a real heart for that. Plus, it was great fun to go out on Saturday and do combat with my kids. And, there was a winner and a loser, and you were, and there was some something got done. And and when I moved out to Benton City uh, in the in 2000, right around 2000, I discovered they didn't have a football program. Right after I moved out there, only 
before and after daycare program closed down. Uh, and we got together and said, we got to do something about this and uh, formed our car show, which we'll probably talk about later, to start raising funds. Uh, a fellow by the name of Gary Howell, Matt Barber, and Bobby Shahan and I got together and said, why don't we have a grid kids program? And we just went out and did it. We didn't have any money. We didn't know how we were going to get it. And we went out and raised, I don't know, thirty, forty thousand dollars bought all the equipment. And probably over a thousand kids have been participating in that program over the last 10 years. The car show, we didn't have any money to start that. We were a month away before we were going to do it. And we just went out and did it. Burned out a lot of ink and a lot of uh, copiers and ran our first car show up at the high school to create, hopefully, a youth center in Benton City for, the, for our, our kids. Because the one thing our, your kids will tell you out in the rural communities ain't nothing to do. They're a long way from the big city. And, uh, and so you're always hearing that. Um, and for a certain element of our kids, our higher risk kids, not having something to do opens up doors to things we really don't want them doing. And once they're there, it's very hard to extract them. And once law enforcement gets involved, then we got a kid that's labeled with a felony or a misdemeanor, and they drop out of school, and they drop into the system. Uh, or as I used to tell my folks in Connell in my business, the economic development business, I'm tired of sending my Benton City kids up to Connell to sweep the streets for a couple of years, and you send them back to me. And guess what? One thing they can do is have more kids. But typically, they do not have the job skills or the education to provide for themselves, which is a constant cycle. And so you see in some sectors of Benton City, uh, uh, generational poverty. Not all. It's not all our kids. It's not, a huge it's not a huge percentage, but we're in a country community. We all know each other. So it's far more obvious than it is, say, in Kennewick or Richland or Pasco. Yes. Uh, it doesn't stop generational, a lot of issues going on. Um, I want to touch on the car show. Yes. Um, uh, Chris Knapp uh, uh, is with Cushions, and we got so many other people with uh, elements. Uh, we got Natalie Kenyon, uh, that's uh, 4-H, mm -hmm. uh, and other folks that are getting involved uh, out in the great community. Jenny Reek, a 30-year school teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we've got uh, uh, Martha uh, Roberts coming on board with regards to um, special education programs, yes. uh, on and on it goes. Uh, so one of the things that we need to drive is the ability to pay for a YES Youth Empowered Solutions program. Right. And uh, so what are we going to do with this car show uh, coming up here in late April? Uh, our spring opener, we are, we are the first, well, we were the first. I think somebody jumped ahead of a sunny side or something like that. We're the first week, uh, the last weekend in April. We've always had good weather, thank you, God. Uh, that's a dicey thing at the end of April. But uh, I think the plans are now, because we have a skateboard park in, uh, in Benton City also, that one of our city council members has been very active in school teacher, Lisa Stady, on, and our kids wanting to upgrade and increase the skateboard park. And that's been an issue for a while. So our thoughts are, let me drop back. The car show has raised about $50,000 over the last 10 years. And that's all gone back into youth activities, whether it be high school shops or scout troops. Or last two years, we provided dollars for summer programs for our, for our after school uh, uh, program. Uh, so our whole dedication is put those dollars back into our youth, into the youth organizations. Um, what I see with the car show, which is great economic development, by the way, too. Um, it is. <laughs> yeah, and we're expanding that car show this year. It's our 10th year to some military vehicles and maybe some uh, Latino, what are the, 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 the cars? That, the hump, the hump uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not a car guy. I'm just on the board. Uh, and our car show, and we've always charged the gate at our car show because all those dollars go back to youth. So our thoughts now are to do maybe a little dinner before, the night before the car show, to generate some funding and some awareness of what the issues are. Because these issues are so profiled and not understood by my generation, because I'm an old guy, uh, that we need to be talking to those folks maybe up at one of the wineries the night before the car show, We'll run the car show from our 9 till 3 on Saturday. And then down at our skateboard park, 
about four o'clock, start running an activity down at the skateboard park, build around kids, their music, their art, and, and raise some dollars for the uh, YES program. Because we can't depend on any one grant. If we do, we're going to be silly because the problem is here. And these are kids. And the problems are, aren't going away. They're not kids are away. solutions, so how do we get lifelines to them to give them an opportunity right. to be a part of the solution? Right. Uh, C.A. Hurst and I were having a Starbucks uh, late one afternoon. Brad Fisher came by, mm -hmm. a local businessman in uh, Kennewick Council forever, great, great friend. And uh, I said, hey, Brad, uh, you know, uh, did you know that uh, we're working with a project that incorporates uh, Cushions, which is headed by Chris Knapp, and his son Joshua was murdered a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, he remembered all about that. And I said, well, would you be willing to host a table or two in some location so that we could get some folks out and raise money for the project. Now the pilot that we're doing, and, and, and Brad's, sure, you know, and so once people know and learn about the initiative Youth, Youth Empowered Solutions and what we're doing focused now with Benton City as a starting point, uh, they want to help, they want to get involved. We're looking for a thousand mentors mm -hmm. uh, throughout the whole Benton Franklin uh, community and Burbank. Uh, to fill in, uh, Todd Kleppett has told us, these are really, really needed yesterday. So at Benton City, um, we're focused in on the car show event as our first key cornerstone for fundraising. But whether we get grants or not, um, we're gonna do the Yes Pilot in Benton City. It's gonna happen. And uh, we have applied for, uh, we're in the process of applying for a federal grant, um, and we will be looking back at other uh, funding sources in the community as well. So what are some of the groups and organizations? And um, I think, you know, what are at-risk kids? I mean, you know, aren't they, are they just rebellious, making trouble? What are, are, what are at-risk kids? Uh, I was thinking about that, that, that whole definition earlier uh, when we were talking. Uh, we have generation at-risk kids, and, it, and it, it, this is not an income issue because I have dealt with some kids. Uh, that have come from very established Christian families, put it that way. And then there's that one kid that goes off that all of a sudden falls into whatever, and it's typically into the drug world. And that, the, the most insidious drug I've seen in Benton City is methamphetamines. And it seems that once they're there, to come back out of that culture is very difficult because for whatever reason they're mad at the man, the dad, the mom, and that life allows them to be unaccountable talking about it. I've seen now, I've been out in Benton City for 10 years, and I think I've related to you, Claude, I am not gonna watch another kid that I have coached when they were 10 or 12, by the time they're 22, all the way already back in the system. Having kids with no education, with no work skills, generating children, and just cycling down into poverty, which puts them into our system and costs us a fortune. They're just kids that need direction. I've had a lot of people ask me, what do we do about the kids? And I said, spend some time with the kid. I don't care what you do when you're fish. I coach. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I can do. I can coach them football. I can teach them karate. That relationship of a, an adult that's stable and will set boundaries and be honest with them is imperative. That's typically where they don't have, because that kid that's in trouble typically has parents that are having difficulties or had difficulties as a kid. They've gotten in trouble early on in life for whatever. They've gotten the felony. The felony keeps them from getting a job. It cycles down. They're depressed. They're in and out of the prison system. They come back out. They're back in. The kid sees that happening with law enforcement, so they then get an attitude about law enforcement that's not right, and it isn't the sheriff's problem. It isn't kind of KPD or RPD like, or PPD. Or they're, they're doing their job. Their, their door knocked down at 3 in the morning. Yeah, or, and all yeah. of a sudden dad's going away for whatever. And, yeah. and now the kid, the, the consequence is that who's, you know, and a lot of these folks, poverty steps in there because they can't make a living. So how do we pay the water bill? How do we pay rent? How do we provide food? Uh, and that all impacts down to that kid. We need to be able to put a hand out to that kid and not judge them, love them, and give them skills. Don't be dishonest with them. You can ask any of my boys I've coached. I'm not, I'm not sweetness and light. <laughs> and, I depend, and I demand respect, and I demand that, uh, that, they, uh, that they play the game as a team 
game, and I'll quit. And they're always mad at me before the season's over. I always said to a coach, if your kids like you too much, you're not coaching well. Uh, but I found that when I quit coaching, I got all these kids surrounding me, asking me when I'm going to come back and coach. Because they want that ability to know they can talk to you, and you're not going to BS them. And we've got to give them tools. We've got to reach down and be honest with them and get them their GEDs, get them their work scores, their work skills, so they can get out and provide a living. All of a sudden, 19 and 20 happens and kids are over with. And mom or dad are saying, you're out of here. Or in my town, they're living back in a travel trailer or the back 40 or in the back part of the house. And pretty soon, mom and dad are saying, hey, enough of this. You've got to go. And then where do they go? With no ability to make a living, some of them having children. And then the depression hits. They don't know how to get out. So what do they do? They get high. And that cycle starts again. And or parents are not there to stabilize, coach, encourage, counsel at all. The parents never got it. I, built a, yeah. I helped build a shopping center here on Clearwater and Edison. And if any of you were here in 1986, you can remember how they shut down Clearwater. And I once set out in 86, and that's where I can tell you, I said, and that my shopping center, we're building at the time with some people looking in across it, what was Buttrees, and I said, you know, these kids, we're going to be dealing with these kids kids. I didn't know how prophetic I was because that's what you're dealing with. This is not just a current, this has been a problem that's been building for years and it's quit, I, I'm tired of guilting everybody. It's done. We're all working hard, we're all building our lives, building our companies, whatever. The problem isn't just with that kid, it goes back generationally to the parents and somehow along that line, I don't know if it was drug addiction, poverty or what, the parenting issues stopped being trained well with a lot of people I think. Huge challenge. It's an, it's an epidemic nationwide. Mm -hmm. Disintegration of the family for a whole host of issues. Yeah. And fortunately, a lot of Christian families uh, don't experience that. Right. But a lot have. A lot a have lot gone have. through it, and they found the Lord as a compelling uh, uh, reason for changing their life mm -hmm. and uh, are now witness to that, uh, to the testament of their faith and, and mm -hmm. commitment to Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a little bit about projects in Benton mm -hmm. City. We've got the 4-H people, yep. uh, uh, Natalie Kenyon. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the high school teachers mm -hmm. wanting to, quote, uh, be able to place kids someplace rather than kick them out of school. Right. Because uh, that's the worst thing you can do at that point. Right. Uh, and uh, a whole host of issues. Uh, what are some of the projects going on at Benton City that are going to be done with the kids and by the kids? Well... We've done some census work with both the high school, the fifth graders, and the middle school. In fact, we're getting some more of that material back today. But what I've seen primarily what the kids are looking for is a youth center, some place to be. Um, the other area that I think we can really work on is on work creating something, whether it be fixing that car that Chris Snap talked about in another mm -hmm. segment, or it be, for instance, our town, because we have a revitalization project going and we're working with the high school to build the, uh, the benches and the alcoves, to build the structure over the fountain we're putting into town. Get the kids physically creating in a work element stuff that can happen here. We have a fairgrounds out there that's underutilized. Uh, we don't utilize 4-H uh, well at all, in my opinion. Um, I talked to my friends who are teachers, that they, I talked to one teacher that says that she's dealing with a child a week that's in crisis. Hmm. But after school stop, where do you send them? Well, in my town, if you're going to get psych, as I understand it, if you're going to get counseling and that kind of help, it's in Pasco. Well, that's, that's an hour commitment. And if you're dealing with a poor family that doesn't have a lot of income, that's Drive the car, do you have the car working? Do you have the gas? Do you have the insurance? Do you have the time to get them there and back? So you have that, that distance barrier. So the other area we'd really like to see is get some of that counseling professional help back in town. Through a youth center, I can, I can, we can, not to personalize it, we can be utilizing C.A. Hearst, we can be utilizing Jenny, we can be utilizing Chris uh, and Martha on that youth center, providing some of these skills and some of these things that kids want to do 
that then we can build a relationship with, then we can be talking about a lot of other things. We've got to build the relationships first. What I've just found out with these kids, they feel profiled and they feel ostracized. So you've got to break that down before you can, you've got to break that communication level down. Those are the kinds of things we can do on a youth center. These kids get in trouble at school, they get exited off the school grounds and can't go back on. So some of these guys, we're going to have to get a hold of them in a youth center, and we're going to have to have all the rules and guys like me around that can step outside with them and have a up close and friendly talk about how we, you know, act at the youth center and make sure there isn't any drug activity or any, any of that kind of activity. But we've got, as you have found in, your, in putting this together, we have lots of people that I call that are in silos struggling to get their programs out and not communicating with each other because they have to work so hard for their programs and funding. That's the key thing. Get that youth center going to where you can bring those kind of resources to play in town to the drop zone once the kids and get the kids involved. Well, that's exciting. And uh, I uh, so applaud so many members of the community. Uh, when we became aware of one federal grant opportunity, uh, put the word out to the troops, the first person responded was Cos Edwards at the work source mm -hmm. saying, we're in. Mm -hmm. And that was within 30 minutes of putting that out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a whole new dimension in terms of bringing in skills training mm -hmm. and education coordination, right. uh, looking at uh, putting the GED program uh, housed in Benton City. Uh, that uh, can be support driven directed uh, from CBC. A uh, whole host of wonderful uh, things coming together. Uh, what about this uh, grant? Is that the end all, start all, or, or you know? No, I've been at this for a few years now. I, I was private sector most of my life. I spent the last 13 years of my life quasi public sector and learning out you do not rely on any one source of funding. But what was so great about this? Grant, as I called Joe Lloyd after you told me about the grant when they're going out on the... And uh, Joe Lloyd is? Joe Lloyd is the assistant superintendent at Kai B School District and okay. also does their grant writing. I said, Joe, I don't want to listen to this pre-thing. I won't know what they're saying. Could you listen to it? He did. Um, he called me back and, and I said, gee, Joe, you're the grant writer. Could you help, this with, help us with this? And he went back to the superintendent and Kai B School District has donated Joe's time to write the grant for the four to seven hundred thousand dollars, we needed a municipal organization to administer it. City of Benton City stepped right up to administer it. Uh, we've seen across the board our community step up for what we can do. We've got to look out for other other sources of funding. They're out there, but what they want to see is. Well, in my opinion, is you cannot build these programs for communities from outside in. Mm -hmm. They have to be able from inside out, and, those, and the community has got to be involved. That be the Chamber of Commerce, that be the EDC, that be government, that be the Fair Board. A lot of organizations have got to sit down, get through this subject, serve on the wonderful committees that take a lot of time, because we all have our stories, and put the work in. And what is marvelous about the YES program, which we've never seen in Benton City, because we're that place, you know, 15 miles out of Tri-Cities, is the resources we now have available that can focus. And we're a small enough community that we can move maybe a little faster than the bigger communities. Yeah. Less committees uh, uh, and move on down the line. And it's wonderful for us. We've looked for this connection for 10 years now. Wow. Um, and we can be a great model for the rest of the communities. Well, God's timing is pretty good. And, uh, you know, Chris was looking for the right activity, CA, was looking for this connectivity five years ago. Some of us got together with him at that uh, time. 4-H has always been there, but the uh, connectivity, how do you get kids that are struggling day by day to get involved in a 4-H program? Um, Natalie's gonna look for that. And, and we're, as a community, we're gonna help build that uh, so we get that connectivity going. One of the things that's exciting is Habitat. We're looking at right. several Habitat projects uh, out in Benton City. And for folks in town that uh, have experienced the Bulldog House, uh, we're on the track to get there for the, the KB house. house. The Bear yeah, House. The Bear House. Uh, and so uh, thank you for that acronym. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, for the Bear House. And because uh, that's the, the mantra for the KB School District. And uh, so we're looking to build that connectivity. We've mm -hmm. met with the Habitat folks. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we got a wonderful uh, gentleman, uh, Rick McKinnich, uh, that has said, hey, I want to help out. I'm, I'm going to be involved with your Habitat Connections program. So we have a lot of connectivity going on. The auto show, the, uh, tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the fundraiser event coming up. Uh, and we don't have to date and time that. Uh, we're always open for funding. Uh, this project will be ongoing. We want to build models at Benton City that frankly can be built and, and benefited by everywhere. Our nation's in a crisis uh, and we're just happened to be building a model in Benton City. So what do you think Benton City can do with this? With this project? With this project. With the YES project? With the YES project. Well, we can, it's what we've been looking for for 10 years. There's number of us have been after this whole program for about the last 10 years. This allows us the GED program. Rather than sending my kids to go to CBC, take the bus, come back and forth. That's a two hour back and mm -hmm. forth. Having that GED program right at the high school is huge. Because we know they may be able to lie to you city folks, but we all know everybody out in Benton City. So you tell me your dad, your cousin, your aunt told you not to go, I'll go see them. We can, and to make that work, we have to have the mentors behind it. Well, to do mentoring, we found out you better find somebody like uh, Todd to teach you how to mentor. Because when you're working with kids, you can walk across the issues and you go, boy, I didn't know about that. And you need that kind of help. So in the work programs, I think we are laden with workers, union folks, electricians, pipe fitters, iron workers, all the union trades heavily represented in the Benton City area. I can see where that can be apprenticeships coming back to kids that have to prove themselves, get their GEDs, get their attitudes together, can then see hope. You want to know how to solve the problem for these kids? Give them hope because they don't see any way out, they don't see any hope for their lives, therefore they're getting high, to use their terms. Because there is no way out, so I'm not gonna live past whatever age they are, 20, 30, and they then, by that time, much more hard to recycle. But they need hope, and this is what we've got to be able to give them is hope, so they can support themselves and have a way out. This is an exciting project. It's huge Business exciting. people uh, out there, men, women, uh, please get involved. Uh, we need help. Uh, we need folks to fill up a business table at the car show, the uh, uh, party the night before. Uh, there's we'll lots of, of the projects. Wineries. We'll have it probably Kayona. Maybe I'm not uh, tipping the hand too soon, but you know it'll be probably one of the wineries the night before. And uh, great hosting opportunity for you to be there. You're going to hear more about this project, Youth Empowered Solutions. Thank you very much.